and welcome to Books, Books, Books. I'm your host, Mihaila Stoops, and my guest is Lois Ricewig, avid art collector, community volunteer, president of the Maui Arts League, and now the team leader for the publishing of an art book that is titled Remembering Lahaina. Lois, thank you so much for joining me today. Well, it's my honor to be here, and I'm excited to talk about the book. Well, we all knew that Lahaina was um, carried the title, I would say, of the art capital of the Pacific. And that was because of all the art galleries that lined Front Street. All those art galleries are now destroyed, and reportedly thousands of artworks were also destroyed in the fire. So I'm very grateful to you and your team for having this idea to publish an art book that celebrates not only Lahaina, but its artists and their artwork. So would you please give me more information on how did this idea come about? Sure. Um, I had a phone call from an artist that lives in California. His name is Scott. W. Pryor, and I use the initial because, believe it or not, there are two Scott Pryor artists in the United States, and he lives on in Oceanside, California, and he called me to discuss the idea uh, that he and a friend of his discussed about creating an art book from all of the images that Maui Arts League owns because of our Maui Plain Air Painting Invitational. So... That was true. I have over 2,000 images, and it was really a question of having the volunteers to put a book together like this. And uh, Scott recommended a friend, a peer friend. Her name is Patty McKinney, and she's from San Diego, California. And she was thinking the same thing about doing a book because she had visited uh, Maui and other Hawaii Islands many times, and she knew Scott had participated in the Maui Plain Air Painting Invitational, and we most likely took images of all their artwork. So that's how it got started. And you had over 2,000 pictures of artwork, Correct. and you had to narrow it down to how many? How many are in the book right now? Uh, 250. And... and how hard was it to choose? It was choose a very one? difficult. Probably I wouldn't do it again if I knew how much work because 2,000 images um, that were scattered on um, discs, D-I-S-C-S, discs like we used to use in 2006, and um, some on my hard drive on my PC and others in uh, various uh, volunteers' uh, files. So I had to correlate getting all of those together and uploading them to one common place. And we did use um, my drive to do that. And from that um, effort, which was 2000, we went through each year and categorized them into yes, no, and maybes. Then we could decide from the yeses, do we have enough for the book? And if they had met the resolution qualification for a printed book, which some of them do not. So it was a process of elimination. And that probably took us a good, a good month probably to do. Are there any of the um, artworks that are included in the book? Is this maybe the only record of that artwork that they may have been lost in the fire otherwise? Or they're still out and about? Well, it's a combination. Um, collectors buy art at our event each year. And so if the artist sold the painting that happens to be in our book, um, that person would have that original artwork. There would be no other images in any other books or newspapers, anything like that I'm aware of. And but you're, not, you're not aware of any specific artworks that were lost in the fire and now the only way to see it is basically seeing it in the book because it doesn't exist in real life anymore. Well, you're correct because the galleries, of course, had a lot of inventory. So if it, 
if an artist didn't sell at our particular event, he would um, have them at the gallery that represented him, typically in um, somewhere in Maui, and there are several um, galleries. And that owner of that gallery would try to sell them from then on. But in general, those are all gone. If they were, you know, hung on the walls in the various galleries in Lahaina on First Street, they were, they're all gone. And that's their bread and butter, you know. So it's, it's very devastating to the artist, to say the least. Yeah, I was, I, I think I went on Ronaldo Macero's website right after the fire. And it was so sad to see a picture of his artwork and below it said destroyed in the fire. It, uh, there's no words to describe the sorrow. And I assume that it's even harder for him as an artist. It's not like he could just, you know, make another one. Well, it is sad for them, and especially right at the time of the fire. I mean, they, I think they're still recovering from what's happened. It, and this is our way of trying to raise funds to give back that money that we have raised from sell, selling the book to the artists that live on Maui that were affected by the fire. Well, that's um, really a, a nice endeavor. and. I know we have an opportunity to see some of some uh, pictures, I guess, of artworks that are going to be included in the book. And our tech has the pictures, and let's show them to our viewers. So the uh, book cover is a painting called Lahaina Luna Views, and it's by Ronaldo Macedo. And this is the street that the fire came storming down from the mountains to the ocean. And this view no longer exists. And uh, we selected it for the book uh, cover or the dust cover jacket um, to really bring home the fact that this is what Lahaina was like. So he is our co-sponsor for the Maui Plain Air Painting Invitational. And it was appropriate to pick one of his paintings for the dust cover jacket. This is a painting by Mark Brown from Oahu, and this is of the harbor with Pioneer Inn in the background. And again, Pioneer Inn is a historical hotel. I think it may have been the first one on Maui, I'm not sure. And it is no longer there. And it was sort of the meeting place for everybody who congregated in um, Lahaina, especially during the art events. And I found out from various um, residents of Maui that are elderly and locals that this is where they learn how to swim at the Pioneer Inn. There was the only pool in town, I guess, in the 30s. And, and that's where they learned how to swim. So uh, it, it's nice to be able to see that uh, painting and remember all of that. Now, this is a painting by Michael Clements. Michael lives um, in Kula, and he um, is a um, pastel painter. And this is of the harbor. So this is if you're standing on the walkway in front of the docks there, looking towards Lanai, the way the boats look while they're, you know, in their dock slips. Everybody will recognize this view once if they've ever been to Maui and uh, Lahaina. And this is the courthouse, am I right? Yes, on the uh, left-hand side is the courthouse. And this is a painting by a gentleman named Carl Bretsky. And Carl was one of our invited artists to the Maui Plain Air event. We always had um, 25 artists, five were from Hawaii, five were returning from the previous invitational and then five new artists so that we always had new images of the city and the surroundings for our collectors to you know consider buying so he's a very um professional uh oil colorist and um this is another view looking towards the mountain 
So they had to walk out on that rock, rock walkway to get to that view. This is a painting by uh, Doris uh, McGuire. She was our workshop teacher for the youth. And this is of the banyan tree. And while it's been severely damaged, it is one of the few things that is coming back to life in Lahaina, as we knew it anyway. It is. I had an opportunity to see it myself. And um, I know there are a lot of pictures on social media as well. But yes, it, it is coming back to life. So it brings a lot of hope. Yes, it does. And there's other paintings from other artists of the banyan tree in the book. I just picked, selected one to show to our audience. So now, this is, let me guess, let me guess. Um, this is like one of those like surf shacks off by 505. Am I right? Well, close. It's actually of the area where there are homes in behind the wharf. And they the community calls it their hood. Or and so therefore the artist did. And this is a someone's home. And this is why you know, they were so easily destroyed. They are primarily all wood. So when the fire came through the town, you know, they went up in blazes. And this is by Carlton. He's an uh, artist that lives in Waikapu. And he's participated with Maui Plain Air for 15 years. He has a very distinctive style. Yes, um, that's beautiful. So that must have been on, uh, what's the street parallel to Front Street, Luakai? Probably, well, that's where, behind the... Uh, yeah. uh, I, I, I'd have to check the map <laughs> to yeah. be sure. So I, I do want to say, when I said sh surf shack, it was not in a derogatory way. It oh, was... I, didn't, I didn't take <laughs> it that way, but I know there's a lot of surf shacks that look similar. So, yeah, by yeah. by five oh five, I think yeah. there were there were quite a few of these little um, homes, houses. So, well, you'll see other pictures in the book too of um, surf shacks and surf stores. Like we have uh, Boss Frogs that was on um, the street that um, Lahaina Grill was located. Lahaina Luna, that would mm -hmm. be on Lahaina Luna. Yeah. Yeah. Another one of the um, plantation homes, typical, and uh, this was uh, another one of Carlton's, and this is a, uh, he titled it Canoe Repair. So the uh, homeowner, the wine, was bringing his canoe home, and he needed to do some work on it. I'd love to know where exactly this was, like what street, you know. I know it's some, some somewhere off of Front Street, probably, but it would be nice to know well, where exactly. And in some cases, um, the artists in their text that they submitted to go along with their painting will indicate what street or what neighborhood to give people a better idea. That's that, that's excellent. And since you brought it up, I do want to point out to our viewers that this is a book that not only shows you pictures, but it also uh, gives you a little bit more information from the artists themselves. And I thought that was a brilliant idea to include uh, these messages from the artists. Well, thank you. I think it is too, because I, from a collector's point of view, I'm always wondering what drew the artist to that particular scene? Why did he or she want to paint that? And so we asked them to share some of those thoughts with us. And we also um, do some additional editing by adding um, some of the Hawaiian names to it particular locations that the artists might not know, like Kamehameha Iki Park. They might think it's, you know, 505 Front Street Park, but no, it's really Kamehameha Iki Park. So um, I think it'll be very enjoyable for someone to look at as well as read um, the materials throughout the book. And it will be accurate, which is important. Yes, we are trying diligently. I do have both uh, two uh, historical uh, Hawaiian authors that are working on the team. One is our um, content um, 
creator. And so she's the one who creates all the correct spellings and names of places and the kings and so forth. And then we have um, another historical um, author. I should tell you their names. One was um, uh, Catherine Kamehameha Smith, who many yeah. in Lahaina would know. And the other one is Jill Ingledow. And she is our um, final editor to make sure that the book is accurate, 100%. And um, that's our goal. They're both very well-known Lahaina authors. For those that have not read their books, they need to do that. And um, since you're, you brought this up, how many people in total were involved in this project of putting together this art compendium? Well, the book, you mean specifically? Yeah. Yeah. Well, in terms of putting the book together, I guess there's a team of uh, five of us that do that. And so it includes the two girls I just mentioned and Patty, the girl who was helping me with all of the images and getting them organized. Um, she and I have worked on it the longest because it took months to get the pictures, you know, ready for the graphics designer, which is the person who packages everything together and makes it look wonderful and presentable. And um, so that's five people. And then of course we have all the artists because we had to talk with them, um, remind them that they had signed uh, disclosure Ooh. agreements and that we were gonna print this book and please give us some written statements to add to the painting. So there are 85 artists that work that represent all the artworks in the book. 85 artists. Yes. Yeah, so 85 people that you had to talk to, discuss the project, communicate. Uh, I can't even imagine the number of emails or phone calls that you had. Yes. Yeah, and there's only five of you working on this. So yes. um, you put a lot of hours into this. But I think it's it's all worth it. I can't wait to to see it. I I know right now it's on pre order, but I can't wait for it to be you know available so I can hold it and gift it to others as well. Oh well, thank you. And you know we did do the work with the idea that it would become a treasured you know collectible book, so that this book will go on into perpetuity, because it does document from two thousand and six to two thousand and twenty three. You know, many of the places uh, within Lahaina and how that looked. It does. It surely does. Just these pictures, you know, stirred up so many memories for me. And I know we have a few more pictures to show. Okay, this is um, Leomi. She is, um, she was an employee at um, Montage. And every uh, year, we always have a model that the artist can decide if they would like to paint. And so she was a beautiful Hawaiian gal, and they come dressed in their traditional Hawaiian attire. And it takes about three hours for them to be posing for these artists, and it's always outside. And it, she just was a wonderful representation of what it is to be Hawaiian. And who is the artist? Uh, Susie, Susie Baker. And Susie is from um, the West Coast of the U.S. I think she's in Washington. Very um, experienced artist and does great work. And there are several of her paintings in the book. It's a beautiful portrait. Just gorgeous. Yeah, you know, that brings up this uh, idea, too, that not all artists like to do uh, portraits. Painting people it takes a different, you know, skill set than doing a scene of the ocean or of the banyan tree, as an example. Yeah, probably your model keeps moving if they're like... <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> Not easy at all. Right. So the next um, painting is really special. Um, it is of Michael uh, Mahansmith who was the sandal maker in Lahaina. And his little uh, storefront was tucked in behind um, an ice cream shop that was on Front Street. And most people 
you know, stumble onto him or are told about him because people are wearing his sandals. And he lost his life in the fire, I heard. I did not know that. I, I've heard of him, and I know a lot of people that um, were wearing sandals that he made. And I knew his shop, but uh, I was wondering what's Happens. where is he now? And Susie Baker, who did the um, Hawaiian model, she also painted this paint. And so this also shows how the artists when they're visiting a, a town like Lahaina, they walk around the community and try to find something that really interests them. And so this is a very unusual uh, painting, I think, and it's, you know, of the people in Lahaina. It, it's a piece of history of Lahaina. I think we just have a few more. And this one is, uh, we always call it uh, Jesus is Coming Church. It's on Front Street by the, uh, near the um, Jodo Mission. And Mike Carroll, who lives on Lanai, painted this um, artwork, and he, he called it the basket weaver because he had his the basket weaver had his bike parked right in front of the church, and so it really makes for a nice composition. And everybody knows of this place, and it is still there today. And we decided to include it because there are iconic locations that all of us remember about Lahaina, and. We, don't, we didn't want to focus just on items that were destroyed. We wanted to look at the whole town and its surrounding area. So we're very appreciative that Mike uh, found this composition and, and created this wonderful artwork. Yeah, nobody can miss the Jesus is coming soon sign, which is also, <laughs> I see it in the painting. So it's yeah, I know. good. Uh, this painting is by Macario Pasquale. And Macario won Best in Show with this painting um, this last year, 2023. Um, Maui Plain Air Painting Invitational didn't host an invitational, but uh, Michael Clements and Lin Shu from Village Gallery had one, and it was called Paint Maui Plain Air Event. And um, it was the roster was similar to ours. And uh, John Stern, who is the judge for all our events, was at that event, and he selected Macario's painting for um, Best in Show, which is uh, a monetary award as well as just the recognition. And Macario, you know, he lives um, he lives before Olawalu. Yeah, Ukumayame. Yes. Yeah. Right. In that. And, you know, Macario is known uh, really for his cane worker paintings, if you've seen any of those over the years. Uh, of course, now we don't have sugar cane anymore on Maui, but when he uh, painted the workers, I mean, they were almost jumping out of the artwork frame because they were so realistic. I mean, and they sold for thousands. Macario is a very gifted artist. I think we only have three more. This is one um, by Joe Fletcher. Joe Fletcher passed away last year, and he lived in Kula. And uh, Joe was an outdoor uh, artist as well. And he also did a lot of workshops for the youth, trying to grow new artists. And this is of the sugar mill, uh, sugar cane mill in um, Pu'unene. So this is around the island again, and it's a very iconic location. It surely is. Now this, I think everyone will recognize as Haleakala, and it was painted by James uh, McGrew, who is a uh, artist from, um, I think it's Colorado. And um, he paints, many of the national parks throughout the United States. So when he participated with us, he decided he wanted to go up to Haleakala and paint. And there were several, and this particular one was the best in show as well. One year, a particular year. And this is our last uh, painting we'll be showing today, but this is um, Kahakaloa. And this is, um, that windy road that you're not supposed to drive on, um, and it's in their little village. And um, over the years, the church has been renovated, 
um, it's a Hawaiian church, and it's it's just an iconic location once again. Yeah, save yourself the scare of driving towards Kahakuloa and just get the book and admire the painting. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, uh, an artwork by Greg LaRock, and Greg LaRock was from California, and um, he passed away also within this period of 15 years we've been putting on the event, so it's kind of sad. But anyway, um, there's lots of pictures, many more like this. Um, I'm sure you're going to spend hours looking at all these pictures. I mean, uh, 250 paintings is quite a bit to look up, look at and read about. So but we welcome everyone to, you know, pre-order the book and get on the list. I think we've given our viewers a million reasons to pre-order this book. And the way they could do it, they, they go to... MauiArtsLeague.org slash book, and they could see more information about the book there as well and place their order. And do we have an estimated time that the books are going to be printed and delivered? Well, right now we're looking at uh, the camera ready copy going to the uh, printer, um, I would say no later than um, mid March. After that time, it takes the printer, which is a South Korean printer, um, two months to print the book and uh, ship it. And we have three pallets of books coming. So we have 1,500 books that will be coming across the ocean to Honolulu. And the publisher will um, handle the distribution of all the books. So... It's exactly. not that many books, so I think if one wants one, they need to order it because it's not 1,500 books are going to go fast. It's not that many. Well, and that brings up, you know, we're taking the pre-orders at Maui Arts League uh, website, and once we actually launch the, uh, public, the book to the general public, we'll be selling at um, the publisher's uh, uh, met website as well as all of the bookstores that are in his distribution chain and on Amazon. So it'll become widely distributed and known about. Yeah, but if you want to secure one, you better pre-order one right now, basically. <laughs> that would be nice, be helpful. Well, Lois, thank you so much for giving us information about um, this art book. I can't wait to hold it and spend hours looking at the paintings and also reading the artist's messages. And thank you for the countless hours that you put into this project and that is for all of us. Well, thank you so much. It's an honor. Well, and to our readers, um, we'll see you next time. Ahoy ho.